many of you out there today um, for this recorded meeting. Uh, it's so important to have leaders from across the Chicago Wilderness region, um, four states, seven counties, uh, to help bring forward a green vision that um, makes for a more thriving metropolitan region, all the way from the urban centers out to the farmlands and protected areas across this incredible region. So today we have in store for you um, opportunities for us to think about how we coordinate best, how we work together to do the things that we want to see accomplished for this place we think is so special and we all share. Um, each one of you has a really important role to play in this. Um, it is not just a single planning team or a steering committee that will make the work of Chicago Wilderness turn into that green vision in reality. It's every one of our members. And there are ways that we um, think together, grow together, and work together that make that possible. Today's workshop is um, about those things, in particular, um, network elements and the evolution of networks, how we give and we get um, from being part of this alliance, the principles that we can build on together, and then applying the tools that we learn in order to begin to take those first steps in service of our um, seven goals, the hub that we're building, and the many different ways that we've come together in committees and working groups um, up to now and into the future. So um, with that, I want to thank you for being here again and turn it over to uh, Diane and Peter. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Amy. Um, it's really a pleasure to be with you all, to see names and faces that we are familiar with and new names and faces that we're eager to, to work with today. Um, Peter Lane and I are with the Institute for Conservation Leadership. It's a national nonprofit. And our work is to build leaders and organizations and collaborations. And this two hours that we get to spend with you does all of the above, and we are so excited to have this opportunity on a beautiful Friday afternoon, at least here in Maryland. So um, we are going to step you through what we're aiming for. Amy did a lovely job of kind of giving the why we're doing this and what we're aiming for, but specifically, we want you to walk away with some very specific ways of thinking about networks that the planning team felt like this would be useful for the broad leadership in Chicago wilderness to have in its uh, backpack, to be able to pull out and look at different situations and step into increasing effectiveness and leadership. And so we're gonna cover a lot it, um, and we're gonna give you a chance to pause and go through things as we step through network elements, network evolution, the give get ratio, which is one of my secret little sauces for collaboration, and then the principles for network development. Throughout, we're going to give you a chance to apply these things. And we are hoping that this is incredibly useful for you as you're doing your work in Chicago wilderness. And based on other things that we've done, we also think you may have other collaborations or partners or coalitions running in the background as you're thinking about it. And in a couple places, we're gonna actually ask you to focus on some other kind of collaboration in service to getting to know each other, but also in service to applying the, the principles in very different ways so that you can really absorb it. Um, I would say the other subtext is, this will be very interactive and we hope you walk away with some new appreciation, learning, uh, and connections with the other leaders that are part of Chicago Wilderness. Um, so we're, we are very excited to, to step into this work with you. If you were at some of the past meetings, we have walked through this model of organizational mindset and network mindset. This is uh, going to be there, but we're not gonna spend a lot of time with it. But I will say that we believe from 
working with hundreds of collaborations that taking a network mindset approach actually strengthens and brings to life what can happen in a collaborative setting that's unique, that's not an organizational setting. So I think with that, um, we, Peter and I just wanna say and encourage you um, to think about today like a pair of glasses that you, we're gonna give you some different ways of looking at collaborative work. And we'd like you to literally try them on, try on those glasses and see if it helps you see something that you've been working with for a while where you couldn't make progress or appreciate places where you have made progress in a collaborative setting or help you tweak a little bit of what you wanna do. And this concept of trying on is one that we were exposed to in doing multicultural or diversity, equity, inclusion work. We feel this is a critical piece to being able to work across difference. And in a couple settings today, we're gonna to ask you to discuss, and we'd really encourage you to listen carefully and try on other people's ideas, other people's ways of seeing the world because that is really what allows us to work across difference, which really makes our work much richer and exciting and, and more vital. So this concept of trying on, like we said, is gonna happen at multiple levels. Um, and trying on actually happens sometimes when we slow ourselves down. I think um, in conservation, we're so focused on the task, we're so focused on getting things accomplished that we don't slow ourselves down enough sometimes to be able to reflect and understand and actually allow ourselves to try a different way of seeing on. So with that, I'd like to hand things over to my colleague, Peter, who will put you right to work. So oh, hi everybody, I'm Peter Lane. I'm glad to be with you all today. Um, so just to add on to what Diane said, I mean, today what we're presenting is a little bit of a buffet. Um, and so in the spirit of trying on, uh, try, try everything at the buffet and, and like a buffet, there will probably be one or two things that you're, you know, sort of um, you move towards or, or um, want to explore some more. Um, and also in the spirit of slowing down, I want to take just a minute for each of you to do a little bit of thinking about why you're here today and what you want to learn or solve or try on during this workshop. So you probably all have, you know, different types of roles within Chicago Wilderness. Some of you are involved in or many of you are involved in some of the different goal groups, um, thinking about that. Um, so just gonna um, go silent for about a minute and let you take a note, jot down a note to yourself about what you're hoping to try on or learn from this session. Okay, great. Um, so we just wanna take a quick look sort of what's you know, rumbling around with everybody. Um, some of you have used this with us before, um, the Mentimeter. So uh, this works very well on your phone or a tablet for those of you that aren't familiar with it. Um, if you could go to menti.com up there on the screen, again, it works really well on a tablet or your phone um, and use the code 5236-6854. Um, you can go in there and just jot down your thoughts around what you're wanting to learn solve or try on today's session. So go ahead and, and uh, log on to that and Diane will, um, I think be able to bring up some of what we're seeing. Great engaging um, participants with low capacity, uh, <clears throat> new challenges, how to work together, how to better utilize partners, new approaches to collaboration, 
right? New approaches, create new partnerships, alignment, honoring the process as much as the product. Another, a couple others with engagement. Um, yeah, working in complexity requires being connected, evolve to next level. Yeah, I think um, for Diane and I, we're hoping, you know, some of what we're gonna present today will help you think about how do we sort of move our work overall in Chicago wilderness, but also in the goal groups to uh, really take the work to the next level. Um, great, lots of, um, lots of good ideas there. Excellent. Great, finding how I fit within the CW community, right? Where I can help out and where I can learn. Yeah, it's, it's interesting, right? Like in, in an organization, your role is, is fairly determined, right? And in a network, it's a little more fluid. So hopefully this will help you think about how can I step into the work? Excellent, thank you for getting all those up there. Diane, anything that you're seeing popping out for you? Um, I think the only thing that I was seeing is that people want a lot of the very specific things. And I just want to note that a lot of what we're going to be talking about today is more glasses to see what's going on, which would then lead you to specific things. Um, there are, at the end, some very specific things we're going to suggest, but those specific how to, how to do things, I think we, we, we need to keep thinking about that with the glasses on, I guess is the thing, the thing that I would say. Yeah, I think um, I agree. The work that we're doing today is sort of at a framework to help you really think about the context in which you're working and then uh, work that comes later, we can really uh, support you in diving in and, and thinking about what are the actions we can take that will um, get us where we want to go. So why don't we jump into the work here? Um, first thing I want to talk about um, that Diane and I uh, work uh, with a lot of networks is um, purpose, people, and process. We like to call it the three Ps and um, really think about how these are connected. Um, so obviously thinking about the purpose, the reason why you all come together, um, presumably to accomplish something that you can't do individually, um, how you think about the vision and the mission and the work that you do um, and how the goals flow from that. And then moving around the cycle to the people Obviously, I think you know, that purpose is going to attract people, um, people who have some kind of connection to that work, to the, the vision, to the aspiration. Um, a part of that is also thinking about how well do those people know each other, what level of trust exists between them, to what extent each of those people feels connected or actually, actually part of the network in the sense of, oh yeah, I am Chicago wilderness. Um, and are there others that maybe um, need to be or would like to be a part of that in, in connection to the purpose? And then again, coming around to the process is how you make decisions, how power is distributed, how, um, how credit is given, um, all of those kinds of decisions that um, help you work together in, in a sense, some structure to how you work together in service of that purpose. Um, and that's, again, often different than an organization and how you structure yourselves in a way that allows you to be nimble and fluid, but also enough structure to um, allow decisions to be made efficiently and for people to feel 
comfortable that their voices are heard. Um, so that's the other part of it. Um, and so um, an important way to think about this too is you've got Chicago wilderness, right? So all three of those, how, how do those impact each other within Chicago wilderness? Another level is within your goal groups, because those are sort of little mini networks or mini collaboration. Um, how clear is it about what your purpose is and the work that you're doing for everybody who's involved? Um, how are people participating in that group? Um, what level of trust exists? Um, do people feel really free to voice their opinion and perspective? And then again, the process, how is it that you're um, able to accomplish the work that you're doing? What are the kinds of processes and structures that you're putting in place to support that? So all of those things. And the other thing I wanna point out is that these arrows um, go continually around. Um, we find that in networks, um, it's, it's an ongoing cycle and it's really good to pay attention to all of these. Um, you know, as, as networks evolve, the, pur the purpose often shifts in some way. And so that often um, attracts new people or some people uh, step back. Um, and then it may also require some attention to the process as new people come in or, or people who've been there go out. So all of those things are continually in play. And so for one of those, as Diane says, the glasses that you're looking at, um, it's really important to kind of step above the work and think about, okay, let me think about these three Ps. How well are we, how clear is the purpose of the work that we're doing? Um, how are people engaged? How much trust is there? Um, is there listening? Um, to what extent are the right people in the room? Um, and then again, back to process and how decisions are made, how power dynamics are managed, um, all of those kinds of things. So Diane, I think <clears throat> next slide. Or I can do that. Yeah, so just um, got there a little summary is purpose and goals, just grounded in a vision and direction that keeps the work on course. People, the who and why of participation in the, in the network. How do you create trust? Um, how to best organize ways to stay connected, act and influence what is important and make decisions. <clears throat> I think um, you see it here and it's sort of a theme is this idea of connection and that connection is really the, the kind of the grease that keeps things moving. Um, that the extent to that, that you are in proximity with each other, have a chance to exchange ideas that actually um, really supports the work and supports collaborative action um, as you move forward. So I'm gonna have, we're gonna do a quick um, breakout uh, group here. We're gonna divide you um, quickly into pairs. And um, the question we want is to think about a collaboration that you've been involved in, not necessarily Chicago Wilderness. And we want you to think about that collaboration or that network in terms of purpose, people and process. Um, I want you to think about the three elements and which of them were clearest or strongest and which was the weakest. And just thinking about that, um, what was the impact of that in that network or collaboration? All right, so again, the question for you to chew on with your partner is, I've, you know, here's my, my name, right? First, you want to just connect and um, share who you are, what organization, um, and then a little bit about the network or collaboration um, that you're thinking about. So good. Can we get everybody in pairs?
just a second while everybody returns. Hope you had good discussions. It's always fun to see people return. Uh, folks are smiling and chance to actually exchange and meet some folks and think about purpose, people, and process together. Um, we often, when we're doing this work, will give you a chance to debrief on those questions that you just discussed. Yes, the smiles. It's good to see everybody back. Hope you had good discussions with everybody. Um, we often will be brief, uh, a nice conversation like that, but we're not going to. <laughs> You'll have a chance to return to people purpose process. Um, and uh, we just wanted to kind of get it out there. I do think one of my observations about people and purpose is that who's in the room has a huge impact on how the purpose is defined. You might even feel that in your goal groups. And how the goal is defined will determine who comes. So they are very interactive back and forth with each other, we often find. And it, we also see that you know, it changes over time. And we wanna layer in another really uh, just foundational way of thinking about networks um, this is from work of observing networks and seeing what collaboration focuses on. And as Peter said, the glue or the grease that keeps the work going is the connection. And in fact, um, you can pop them into chat now as I'm talking. I bet all of you know networks that are just about having a connection to other people. Um, this might be a professional network. This might be, you know, a type of work that you do together. Um, I know an environmental education network that's just about connection. ICL participates in a network called the Environmental Capacity Builders Network. It's just people who do what we do. And uh, frankly, we just get together once a year and that's enough but we do email each other and that kind of stuff. We really are support for each other. We learn from each other. So if you have any examples of those um, from your experience, it'd be great to just pop those into chat so that your colleagues can kind of think about those and know about those kinds of networks that are just focused on connection. Some networks, not all, but some move to also having alignment. And I was thinking about alignment as, I don't know, some of you probably are parents or have nieces and nephews or been around kids. If you put kids in a sandbox that are about two to four, they are not gonna do projects together. They're gonna be doing projects on their own in their portion of the sandbox. But one of the things that happens in the sandbox is they're kind of in proximity to each other and they're actually influencing each other and the way they're playing. And we often see this in collaborative settings, having an overarching vision of what we're going to do. Each entity will act and work in different ways, sometimes in like many nodes to, to make that kind of work move forward, that vision happen. And um, ICL had the pleasure of working with a 10-year network that now isn't uh, in operation, but it was called Vital Lands Illinois. And I often think about Vital Lands Illinois as a fabulous example of alignment, big vision, big tent. People stayed in proximity at least once, twice, multiple times a year. Work didn't happen in a like, we're, we have this goal and Vital Lands is gonna go make it happen but it happened in ways where people influenced each other. I can still see the meeting where Hackmatack National Wildlife Refuge was announced. And then all of a sudden folks in Kankakee Sands were like, wait a minute, that's inspiring. Maybe we could move things forward here. So you can see that analogy of the sandbox. It's not like the sandbox wasn't defined. It was very defined, but it was a, kind of a big tent and an opportunity to be able to influence each other and move things along. 
a lot of people think collaboration has to be about production. Like we have to do something where all of us work together and all of us working together are going to make that thing happen. Um, I come out of an advocacy background and I think some of the classic production work has happened around uh, passing a piece of legislation and everybody signs on and then you go at it and everybody plays a role in the production to get that thing happening. I've often, I've also seen things um, in national networks where things are produced that then help everyone. So um, there's a national international group called the rights of way working group where they came together they were doing connection and kind of alignment for a long time learning from each other helping to add to different strategies and then all of a sudden a piece dropped in where they could they saw a chance to do a federal program that would support the work in rights of way and habitat development so Part of what we want to say is not every network has to do any of these. Like sometimes networks just do one thing. They often progress. They don't have to progress to be incredibly valuable. There are some really beautiful examples of networks that were only about connection. And then all of a sudden when it was needed, like I said, they, they knew each other well enough. They were aligned enough and knew each other's strengths and weaknesses that they could then shift into to action. So what I would love to um, see is just maybe one example of an alignment network in chat real quick, as you're thinking about it, things where it's more like parallel play, small nodes might do things together. Just kind of drop that in chat so people can see it. Um, and then if you can think of one where it's really focused on we produce these things together, uh, just put production, put alignment in your example and production in that example. But I'd like you to have your wheels turning on that in other network settings um, before we move on. Great. The Calumet National Heritage Area. Yes, often partnerships where you're doing similar work in different places. I would guess the amphibian and reptile conservation work is a very big network. The stormwater collaborative, terrific, great. Sometimes production is thrust on you. Uh, this is actually one of my least favorite ways for, produ for production to start, which is a foundation or funder says, here, here's some money if you'll work together. That can be incredibly productive, but it often happens without building the connection and the understanding that would lead to alignment. And so you have to just pay attention to those dynamics when it's production right off the bat. Um, I think it, it can work, but it, it also can be a trap and it can be really hard to make decisions quickly about things when you haven't already built the connection or the alignment and the work. Okay, we wanna put you to work thinking about it. You've been giving me these examples and I will say sometimes it's evolutionary, but each of these pieces has components that for us as leaders of collaboratives or leading in a collaborative setting, we have to actually think about these various pieces mm -hmm. And if we're ready, or if we've built these pieces in place, so the links, the connections, do we actually understand each other well enough? Um, do we understand our, what we can do together and the value that we have? Do we have a shared way of approaching this? That takes time. Um, and then defining the joint action that can be done and I often would say sometimes it's like all for one and one for all. And sometimes it just could be a subset of all for one. <laughs> I think sometimes collaboration thinks we've got to get everybody on board. And I'm like, yeah, no, not really. You can still do a lot of effective stuff and have the big tent without doing that. So we are going to put you to work in a little longer conversation with a few more folks. And we want you to apply 
these two pieces that we've just talked about, uh, purpose, people, and process, and the concepts of network evolution with connection, alignment, and production. We're going to give you a nice chunk of time, 25 minutes. You don't have to take notes. There's going to be no document to collect everything. We just want you to have a chance to apply things. And here's what we would suggest, and we're going to drop this into chat so that you have access to it when you go to your breakouts. Quick round of introductions. What's your role in Chicago Wilderness? Which of those connection alignment production most applies to Chicago Wilderness? And Chicago Wilderness is kind of like the elephant and the people feeling the elephant who have their eyes closed. You all have a part of it. So I would say connection alignment production for the part of Chicago Wilderness that you know. And then from your perspective as a group, have a quick discussion about the purpose people process as applied to Chicago Wilderness. Um, I would say a lot of your questions about the how-to would fit in the process bucket that we heard at the beginning. Um, but there also, I know from the goal group meeting that we have, there's also a lot of question like, do we have the right people in our goal group right now? Um, how does that influence us, et cetera? And then we'll send out a note when you've got just five minutes left. And in that five minutes, we'd like you to just pick out two cool things, two ahas that you all talked about that you wanna make sure the rest of the group hears about. You don't have to have consensus. You just have to pick together two things that someone is gonna be willing to put into Mentimeter when we come back. So we can just get a little bit of a flavor of what you all talked about. Okay, I think we should be ready to head out. You've got these questions in this outline in chat for you. And uh, Laura's going to send you out for breakout groups. That's good, but so, you won't get your aha. You might miss some ahas because they didn't get through them. Well, here's the deal. We won't know if those were shared ahas or if they're your own. We're going to go back to Mentimeter to collect these. But um, we definitely are interested um, in ahas that you had. And um, you, any thoughts that you had about purpose, people, process, or any things that you were thinking about Chicago wilderness with connection, alignment, or production? So we'll see what comes yeah. in in a quick, quick two or three minutes. One of the nice things is this is uh, applied learning. It's applied to something that you all share. And as I said, I'm sure many of you are thinking about other kinds of collaboration that you're working in the background. And we're hoping that's a twofer for you uh, for participating in this. The threefer is that um, as we get things in about your ahas here, um, I'm sure there are some out there just waiting to hit send. Um, that this is also really good information for us as we work with Chicago Wilderness and help the goals groups and other kinds of planning and uh, focus work so that Chicago Wilderness can be even more effective. And my guess is I know you all are also on the journey to be better at diversity, equity, and inclusion. There's probably going to be some aha discoveries in here that'll be useful for that work too. So I don't know what's going on. Oh, I see. Here we go. Let me go back. All right. I see. I set this up as a one idea at a time. So facilitating engagement. like that one. Involvement is key. Yeah, the length of time that a collaboration is involved, you know, has been working as an interesting factor in thinking about the evolution. Um, definitely. The product seems in uh, ethereal. Engagement has been pretty continuous. I uh, really appreciate this aha. 
I, there's not a collaboration that ICL's worked with that I couldn't say this about. And continuing to ask, do we have the right people or not is a, just an essential thing. Okay. I'm sure there's a few more ahas that will be coming in. This is great. Well, I hope you enjoyed those conversations. Um, we are going to move on. Oh, that's super cool that the people in your breakout are new. Um, that is super cool and uh, is something to pay attention to as you're leading in this collaborative setting. Virtual advocacy, a couple more things coming in. Yes. I think actually, uh, and it's maybe hardest to document, but I think the alignment that Chicago Wilderness has and alignment activities or actions that have happened make it hard to kind of go and gather and find out what Chicago Wilderness has actually impacted. It's kind of like ripples on, a water, on water. But for the sake of time, uh, we have a few more things we want to introduce you to that we think are pretty key. I'm going to hand things over to Peter um, to take us into another way of thinking about our work. Great. Thanks, Diane. <clears throat> so um, early on, Diane mentioned uh, the give gap ratio. So I'm going to don't put your phone down yet. I'm going to get you back to menti.com um, and give you a chance to think about this a little bit for yourself. So my first question for you is, what are the top things that you get or receive from your participation in Chicago wilderness? What keeps bringing you back and participating and staying engaged as a, a partner in, in the Alliance? So um, once again, go to Mentimeter and if you could um, put in your response to that question, we'll take a look and see what you come up with. Absolutely, the relationships, knowing who else is doing the work, collaborating, um, amazing information, right? It's a great way to find new resources, find new resource people, know who's doing what, um, new ideas and projects, inspiration, uh, diverse ideas, connectivity, exchange information, connect with new partners. Um, some very similar ideas, right? Best management practices, some of that stuff that falls under the realm of information and resources, exchange, connection, uh, inspiration, uh, collective institutional insight, collaboration, Ah, somebody's got therapy. That's great if you're getting some therapy from it too. Uh, <laughs> um, setting ambitious goals, encouragement, absolutely, right? Like if we were all work in our own little silos, it's easy to just kind of get into the day-to-day, -day, but certainly when you have this connection with others and connected to something so much bigger than your, yourself, it can really be energizing to, to have that kind of connection. Um, so some really great uh, responses, all different kinds of things, um, certainly uh, really connects with um, what we often see uh, working with networks. So some really great answers. Um, okay, so the next question then, right, you probably already know is what are the top things you give in your participation in Chicago wilderness? So you're getting some really amazing stuff from Chicago Wilderness and Chicago Wilderness doesn't exist unless people put back into it. So um, go back to Mentimeter and what are the top things you give in your participation in Chicago Wilderness? We'll see what, see what you come up with. Excellent. 
experience. Absolutely. It's a great way to share with others, others coming into the field, mentor um, time, uh, occasional staff time, grant funding, more connections, knowledge, 40 years of experience. Absolutely. Technical knowledge, um, connections, uh, passion, resources, ability, stability. I like that one, that uh, the ability to create that kind of stability for the, for the alliance. Funding, access to fundraising dollars, uh, camaraderie, right? A lot of this, again, is just like that um, being with people that, that keep you inspired and keep you moving. Um, big ideas, they will inspire you. Uh, framework for accomplishing goals. I think that's a great one, right? Thinking about your own work within the larger context of Chicago wilderness um, just frames things a little bit differently. Um, facilitation to bring people and ideas together. Validation, absolutely. Like, yeah, we're, we're heading down the right path here. Um, networking, aligning my group's mission with CW mission. Nice, all really uh, great examples. Um, promoting the Alliance. Nice, that's a good one. So some really um, good ideas thinking about what you actually give. Um, and those are both um, really important questions, right? And it, because um, Diane and I talk about the give-get ratio, the give-get ratio is not the same for every individual or alliance partner. Um, and so it's always good to think about also just for yourself, um, what you're there to give and what you're, what you're there to get out of it. And just kind of be really clear and intentional about that with yourself. Um, the other part of it is that ratio is different for everybody. And so others may be coming to the Alliance um, with that different give-get ratio. And sometimes that can give, up, give can create friction um, so we always want to raise this up so that um, groups are explicit about this and there's clarity about uh, what an organization is giving and what, what they're getting. Sometimes assumptions are made. A lot of times mm -hmm. assumptions aren't based in reality. Um, so we have a, a few um, examples of what some of those um, those give get ratios might involve. A lot of them were from the, actually the examples that you gave. Oh, Diane, can you move that? I can't seem to, um, there it is. Um, shared outcomes, right? So when you've got shared outcomes, um, people have an opportunity to really see them, see their place within, um, the collaborative work and how they fit into what those outcomes are. It helps them figure out where they fit in. Um, another one, new and improved capacity. So by participating, many of you identified this, you get new information, new resources, maybe access to technical skills. Um, you might build new skills. Even participating in a session like this through Chicago Wilderness you may be um, building your own capacity to work with other networks. So a lot of other uh, examples, new and enhanced resources, efficiency and creativity, um, positive pub publicity, uh, new leaders, donors and volunteers, different ways to access people. Um, and probably a lot of other examples of what some of those gives and gets are. Um, so one of the things, if you think about um, a network that you've been involved in or even activities within Chicago Wilderness, um, when that ratio was strong, 
um, was really strong and good. Um, what did that kind of look like or feel like? Um, usually that means there's a high level of engagement, right? So there aren't sort of people sitting on the sidelines kind of like this um, and folks are really um, participating at a high level, feeling free to um, express their perspective um, mm -hmm. and, and their ideas to the rest of the group. Um, if you think about when the give get, give get ratio is off, um, that's again where there might be lower engagement or people um, are not coming to meetings. Um, they're um, you know, not participating at the same level. So partly what we really encourage you to do is think about, as I said, the give get ratio for yourself and your institution, but I'll think about that a little bit in terms of um, all of the partners and their involvement. Um, and even, um, you know, carve out some time to talk about that in a way that allows people to really think about and get clear about what they want to get out of participating and what they're able to give. Um, and so part of that, as I mentioned, is to pay attention to participation or the energy of people. Um, the higher the, the, the uh, energy, then the stronger that give-get ratio is. The lower the energy, the lower the participation and engagement, then mm -hmm. um, the, the weaker that give-get ratio is. And so for you as a leader, I think one of the important things to do is not only using those, that lens, um, but also thinking about um, how can you help facilitate that to help the others get what they need from the, um, from the Alliance. Um, so I'm gonna take a, just a note for yourself is to jot down and think about your work in Chicago wilderness. Um, how might the give get ratio support your collaborative efforts in Chicago wilderness? So I think we're gonna go back to, we'll just take a second to think about that a little bit. And then I think we're going to Mentimeter to get to collect some of your ideas around that. So again, think about your work, your observations about how the give get ratio might support your efforts in Chicago wilderness. If you want to uh, start typing in your ideas there, we'll take a look. And I, I might chime in here and say, I think sometimes just asking the question, uh, it's, a, it's actually a very powerful go round to hear a group talk about why they're there. Um, why are they participating in a goal group or the communications group? Like, what do they want out of it? And uh, I often think about networks having this chance to survey what people are willing to give. Um, sometimes we don't know until we ask the question and asking it in a public way creates a, a sense, a shared sense of what the resources are that are there and how the work might actually help people um, increase that give and get ratio. Yeah, I think sometimes we think it's obvious or we make assumptions, but really bringing that to the forefront onto the table is important. Let's see. Yeah, great. I mean, serve as a common baseline for group understanding and participation, absolutely. <clears throat> Increase visibility for our cause. Yeah.
Yeah, that idea of transparency, definitely. Uh, making it easier for newcomers. Yeah, I mean, that's, it's so important with newcomers is just, um, you know, recognizing that uh, it might be a different give get ratio and uh, they might be there hoping to get something that um, you haven't even thought of. So having those kinds of conversations, I think will be really productive. Nice, participating is increasing my organization's give get ratio. Yeah, All right. Sometimes you get things that you don't even expect actually. Um, but really being thoughtful about that is, is really key. Yeah. Now that's a great question, right? Larger organizations great have question. potentially more give get. It, I, it speaks to that idea that the, the give get ratio is not the same for every organization. Um, so you're right. I mean, for a larger organization, it might be, um, you know, a, a much different ratio compared to a, a much smaller um, community-based organization. And the other thing I'd chime in on is Chicago Wilderness is a collaboration. It's a coalition of organizations, but actually networks are networks of individuals. That's why when you have a consistency of participation, especially at a leadership level, things work better because it's fundamentally a relationship between the people. And so the give and the get could actually be asked both for the individual person, like what are you looking for, as well as for the organizational. And I think one of the things in collaborative settings, we make a mistake sometime of not focusing on the individual level. Um, I would say, you know, many of the things that you get, the camaraderie, the finding people, the knowing where to go, like all of that is about both what you need personally, but also what your organization needs. So I think that's a good thing to tease out. Yeah. And sometimes like at the organizational level, you need many people involved in order to be able to suss that out together. Like. Uh, many of you have multiple people participating in Chicago Wilderness might be useful to sit down as a collective and say, what are we collectively trying to get out of it? And how do we then each individually act or collectively act as an organization to get that out of it? All right, so much good stuff coming in. One of the nice things is all of this will come back to you. Um, in the form of a uh, recording. We'll share the slides. We'll share the download out of the Mentimeter. Um, but for now, we have one more piece that um, we'd like to share with you. And um, we're hoping that this is one final piece to just give you some, some tools. You came in at the top of the webinar asking like for some very, very specific things. And these are your three very, very specific things that you can do in meetings or that you can do um, just generally like paying attention to these things will be helpful. So if you want it to be a participatory meeting or if you want it to be a participatory network, you have to engage with people. What do I mean by that? Doing introductions at the beginning of the meeting before you dive into work. That sounds kind of um, basic, but I can't tell you the number of meetings where people just go straight to task. They don't take the time to know each other. And now that we're virtual for a while, uh, that's even more important that we have those human connections with each other. But those are the connections between individuals. Also engaging with the network early and often. Uh, these uh, meetings that ICL have been doing, we've gotten a ton of information from you. That's really helpful. It hasn't been a one way, here's what we want you to do. Anytime you can do that in the network, it will help. There's a national network called the, um, the, uh, 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 the directors, you, the sustainability directors network. <laughs> um, 
I'm missing a letter at the beginning. But anyways, Urban Sustainability Directors Network. You can't be a member in that network unless you agree to answer five surveys every year. Why do they do that? They don't have any clue what their members want, what they need to get, unless they get the information back. But if you don't do the survey, you can't get your voice in there. Group work often happens in little teams. So let's just say, for example, you have a goal group with 10 people. So all of the work is probably gonna happen better in tiny units, like three or four people who then also do things in between meetings. And again, this is kind of basic, but I've watched a lot of groups, especially in a collaborative setting, lose the momentum because they just think everything's gonna happen when you get together. So let's say we have a small group who's gonna take this task on. That also means someone needs to be reminding and checking on that small group. Do you have what you need? How's it going? Is, are things coming along? Are you gonna be ready to report at the next meeting? <laughs> because, or do you need anything from us before we get to the next meeting? And that's the kind of thing that we're talking about in terms of assignment. These we developed for virtual network development, but even if you're meeting in person, so much of the work in a collaboration happens virtually. Um, we shared these about a year ago, but they're still as alive as anything that, that we've presented. So thinking about how to engage early and often and getting things into units that can be done, but also not depending on the meeting to get the work done. And thinking about how to organize the work in between meetings so that progress happens and everybody feels good at the end of the day. So that was your speed lecture you don't have a chance to like process just that content, but I hope given in the, con the context of everything else we've shared that that will be useful to you um, as some very specific ideas to take forward. We are gonna be heading into a, one more breakout group with five new people, roughly a little larger, actually four or five would be about right. We had nine breakout groups the last time and um, what we want you to do is to really apply anything that you've picked up. And here's the key to your work in Chicago wilderness, not to some like Chicago wilderness thing out there, but specifically to what you are doing in Chicago wilderness. So this is a chance for you to reflect with others who care about Chicago wilderness and are also trying to do and lead and help things along, this is a chance for you to have some sounding board and a, and a chance to think about things. Again, no detailed notes are needed. We're not collecting things. Feel free to think about any of these frameworks or lenses of the glasses to think about your particular piece of Chicago wilderness. And these are the two questions and we're going to drop these into chat now so you can take them with you. But is there a tool or idea that's been shared that just seems most salient, most important, most applicable for what you're trying to do within Chicago Wilderness? Or it could be that you've just started participating and now you're wondering about things because of that. And then all of this is aimed at Chicago Wilderness working towards clear goals and collaborative action, obviously with connection and alignment being a part of that. So is there a tool or idea that you can use that will really help move toward that kind of clarity of purpose and clarity of action? Um, could be like getting more momentum, um, other things like that. So things have been dropped in chat. We're gonna send you out to your groups. I would say roughly about 20 minutes or so. So try to get around the horn with a quick round of introductions and then do some reflecting about those two. Okay, here's everybody. There they are. All right. Welcome back everyone. Um, we are going to go uh, right away to kind of capture some of the, the thinking and uh, 
the way things have impacted you. And um, to do that, we're going to use Mentimeter again. And this first one, I don't know, it'll just be interesting to see what you have to say. Like Peter and I, uh, as you said, we kind of put out the smorgasbord or the banquet today of a variety of tools. Um, I think, oh, th this is interesting. The voting is coming in. Um, we didn't spend too much time on these, so I'm not surprised those are third and fourth. Oh, purpose people process, taking the lead. Interesting. No, nope, no, nope, there goes the give get ratio. I, it's it's just interesting to us. I think when we're working with groups and Peter, if you want to jump in on this too, we often in the middle of a conversation will see using those glasses and we'll go, wait a minute, how about this? But um, they're all very very useful for us as we're working with such a variety of groups. Yeah, I always, I mean, I encourage people to step back and just choose one, right? And think about it, think about the work you're doing or thinking, think about Chicago wilderness, just using that framework um, as a way to give you more information, more context, help you make decisions, help you think about how you can um, lead and influence in, in your goal group or within Chicago wilderness. Yeah, this is great. Okay, well, hopefully everybody's gotten in on the voting here. Um, this next one is an open-ended question. Um, we didn't ask you to summarize or do anything. This is just for you personally, as you're thinking about your work as a leader within Chicago Wilderness. Is there anything that seemed important? either that you thought and said, or that someone else said that you want to amplify a little bit for the group. Um, it could be that there was a theme as each of you thought about your own leadership pieces, um, but don't, don't necessarily um, push that. We're just, we just want to get a flavor here of um, what seemed important. Fantastic. Um, yeah, the tangible and intangible benefits of uh, a lot of people want to evaluate networks and those intangibles are so hard. Um, evolution, what are you seeing, Peter? It's always good to see new, new connections, right? That's always, I always feel like when new connections are made, that only strengthens the, the network. Um, Communication is on there. Jim brought that up in the chat. I mean, I think all of the sessions we've done with Chicago Wilderness, there's a theme around communication, a couple of sort of different angles, but um, you know, I think that's an ongoing um, challenge or issue to can continue working on. Mm -hmm. And I, I mean, that makes sense. I mean, Chicago Wilderness is a big inspirational com complex kind of um, network. So um, that may be one of those things that you, you, you sort of manage as opposed to completely solve. That's great. I like the one in the red box here too about you all helping each other, sharing contacts, sharing advice, perspectives. That is part of trying on hearing other people and trying on their experience um, and their examples and then, you know, taking what you can from that and applying it to the work that's in front of you. Um, I like that one there. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Peter. No, I was just going to say, I mean, that's a nice way of, you know, hey, let's, let's try to use this tool or this framework and think about how that relates to the communication issue and how right. um, how you talk about the value, and also mm -hmm. that it 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 in, inhabits those different spaces, all of them in some ways, and that's okay. Yeah. yeah, and different component parts will be at different places. I also really like this one about it's okay to be in process. 
Um, it's okay to not know. It's okay to take your time. Um, I do think slowing down is often the secret to going fast. <laughs> I would say too, Diane, that one about um, connection alignment, production and communication and the value. And I, I don't know, it might be provocative a little bit, but I would even think about that in terms of the goal groups. There are some goal groups that um, for a while, you may be more about connection than alignment. And there might be a couple of goal groups that's out in front and you're really more about production. So um, obviously you want to sort of get all your goals aligned, but what happens within them may actually be different within the network. That's great. All right, we are closing in on the hour um, and we wanna give Elizabeth the stage in just a second to close us out, but uh, we wouldn't be doing our jobs in the intangible of uh, understanding, like did ICL have any impact today? We're curious, these were our objectives and we're curious for you um, how, how strongly you disagree or agree with these statements. This is basically flipping the outcomes into personal statements. So if you can just give us one more opinion on this, that would be great. Um, and while you're doing that, I'm going to take our spotlights off and add Elizabeth and ask her to also take us out. So the mentee will continue to be open. Uh, we will share this with everyone, but I am going to flip back so Elizabeth can close us out. Well, thank you, Diane and Peter. We truly appreciate uh, the conversations that you led us through today. Uh, very important uh, as we begin to understand how we best can move forward. And, and I hope everybody came away today learning something new. I also want to thank uh, the leaders uh, that really have been working to take care and focus to make sure that we are very inclusive and that we ensure that everyone has a voice and an opportunity to to get involved and to jump in. And so um, again, thank you to, to those and everybody that's here. I also, I want to extend my appreciation to everybody that made the time to be here today. Um, it's a Friday. Uh, there's a lot to be done. Uh, everything that everybody gives um, to the Alliance and for um, our areas that we share in a nexus here, the purpose, um, as we learned today, um, is so vital. And we know this by the engagement that we've had for over 25 years, um, those that are still with us, those that keep finding us and stay engaged and, and life gets us and they move uh, maybe in and out of, of the work that we're doing based on what's relevant and important for them. And so that's really important. Um, can you advance to the next slide? Um, one of the things that I did want to share with everyone is one of the, the opportunities, I guess, I won't call it challenges, um, being an alliance that's very organic and with a metric mi network mindset is, is how to figure out how you can plug in and, and how do you describe what we do to everyone or from your organization, you may be an individual that uh, you understand it. You've been, uh, you've caught the bug here to be really jazzed about our, our green vision and mission and what we stand for, but then you're trying to convey it back to your organization or your directors or managers or, or other colleagues that may not know how and, and who we are. So this is just a brief infographic um, and to take you through it just briefly, um, of course, the why is the purpose, why we're here. And that is that we have a, a big green vision and we wanna promote diverse and healthy communities and economic vitality, right? The what is, is how we're going to measure this and document that. And um, you know, we're working on some really exciting things. There's some great work that's been done in the past, but mapping so we can measure and share that impact in a very transparent way. The where, as we know, it's within the, around the Lake Michigan area, all the way with the four states from uh, Wisconsin, all the way through Illinois to uh, Indiana to Michigan. And the who is we are represented, as you know, with so many different organizations on the federal level, state level, county level, 
corporate to private NGOs, faith-based um, agricultural communities. So again, everybody's welcome under the tent. Uh, and the, the more diverse we are, the stronger that we're gonna be. And really when it gets to the how, as you learned today, it's the we. Um, there is not, we're the engine, um, you know, we're the ones all together as we share this that make this happen. It's not one organization, it's not a staff. We have one coordinator and uh, we've got someone else helping us with Malia with doing our social media and marketing, but it is, it is us. And our, how far we go towards our green vision is all based on our ability to contribute and to engage to make this happen. Um, so just from briefly, the executive council, oh, back one more, just, uh, sorry, one more. Um, with the uh, executive council for those, just again, just a little structure framework, the executive council right now is the governing body. Um, and then there are all the working groups, the steering committee, which basically handles the staffing functions um, to help pull things together. Um, and then there's corporate council and all the teams, but they're all in a full circle that everything comes together and uh, they work as a collaborative. And of course, all the work that we do together provide those resources that are here and available for everybody to take advantage of and, uh, and share. Uh, so that's all available. And next slide, please. And then trying to convey this big green vision that we have, these bold goals in a shared piece for 2025. And basically, um, these are all circular. They all interact with one another. And how this is being functioned is they're led by different members and organizations and teams. And you can be on more than one team. Um, you can be on all of them if you have the capacity and the wherewithal to do so. And it is actually great because you can cross pollinate. But um, I just want to share that we've got these seven goals. Uh, they're very active with the purpose of, of developing healthy lands, waters, people, and planet, particularly here in our, our Chicago wilderness region. So um, these seven goals, as we've been working through them, are still being shaped. And um, the work products, the demonstration projects, the model projects, et cetera, are going to help get us there. And, and like we said, these goals, um, it doesn't mean uh, that uh, a group has an interest and they're working on an area. Um, that's what the Alliance is all about. These are just the high level things that we're working towards as a whole. And uh, we hope to continue to be engaged and follow with us as we, as we build these out and work towards some, some truly action steps and measurables with our hub. Um, we will be launching more information on this. We have an executive council meeting uh, within just uh, a few weeks away on July 21st. And ICL is going to continue to work with the planning group and um, to prepare us to share the great work that we have ongoing. And we hope that you will join us and invite more individuals from your organization and other partners to join us for that conversation. So um, we value your feedback. Uh, if there's anything, um, a, a phone call, an outreach, uh, voicemail, we, we just love to, to hear from you. And if you're not involved and want to know how, um, we welcome that. Um, please join us because there's a lot of great and exciting things on the, on the, on the path forward um, as we build together. So thank you for your time. We appreciate you joining us today. And uh, that is all I have. Anything else for the good of the group or uh, Laura, back to you to close out? No. Thank you very much. If you have any questions or follow up, please don't hesitate to give me any, to drop me an email. Have a great weekend.